So here we are in our fifth lesson now in our hangman, our new GUI hangman with SQL um, game. In this lesson, we're actually getting around to uh, doing some features and adding some features into playing the game. So um, we've already got the game running. We've used the game before. We don't have to change any of those features there, but there's a couple of other things we want to add into it. So let's have a look at what those are. So. To start off with, we are actually going to have in the game screen, we've got the controller and we've got the model. Um, so the first thing that's going to happen is that we send the user ID, because this time, previously we used to just get all of the, um, we just get one particular word and we didn't use that. But one of the requirements they've changed about it is saying, well no, I don't want to re-guess a, a word that I've already guessed. So we need to send the user ID and then get a list of all the words that that user has guessed. Radio, because then we can actually, when we get the word, we can then check if the word has been guessed. All right? And if the word is guessed, we get another word and we do the same thing again. If the word is not guessed, then we can proceed with the game. So we update the UI, it starts playing the game, and they play the game. When the game is finished, we then need to change a few things. We need to add the result of the game into our data store. So we have got three interactions between the controller and the model. Now, like I've done with all these other videos, we're gonna start by making the methods of the data store, because that way we can test it to make sure it's handing out the right information. So it just makes um, our troubleshooting a little bit easier. Once I look in the data store and say, yep, that's all working, I don't have to worry about that, and if there's any problems arise, under the problems actually in the controller. So, the two that we have is we need to add results, we need to get get a word, and get the all the guest words, right? So that's the three interactions that we have. Now we've already got the get word method, so we're only gonna worry about getting all the guest words, and also the um, add in the results. So that's our first two things we're gonna deal with. So let's come into here, and the first one we're gonna do is get um, the guest words. So we're not in the add methods, we're up in the get methods section, which is starts, ends here. So again, I'm putting two lines underneath the previous method. I'm gonna say define get um, guest words, okay? It's a self. Okay, I'm getting the um, user ID in, and the user ID is gonna come in, it should be an integer. Okay, so that's correct, I come in here, and what's it going to do at the end when I get that, I'm going to then get back um, a list of um, strings. So it should return back to me a list of strings, so that's it, I've actually got to find the variable here, I've got my type hints in, I then need to add my doc string in to explain what this does. And this um, returns a list of um, words already guessed by the user. Okay, so I've got that. Let's see, what we're gonna do? Well, this is a query again, so we know with an a, a query we actually have two steps with our query. The first step is we need to actually SQ, um, S, uh, execute the SQL query. So self, we use our cursor to execute. Um, Cursor.execute, and I'll put my um, parentheses there, I press enter and put my inverted commas in to give me my space where I can type out my nice little um, query. Now this is actually gonna be a query with a subquery. Um, again, you assume that you have a, a fair bit of knowledge about SQL before we started this, but from words, I need you to return the word from words, um, but not all words, I only want the words where the word ID um, is in this query. And what is this query gonna give me? It's gonna say select word ID. So it's gonna give me a list of word IDs from uh, games where the user ID equals, and I need to have a parentheses here, user ID, and not just that, and as well, where guest 
equals true. Okay, so let's have a look at that a little bit to understand what it's doing here. So I've got two tables I'm using. I'm using um, I'm using the word table. Let's open that one up, and I'm using the game ID. So I'm going to return a list of these, a list of words, radio. But which words? Not all the words. I want the words where the where the user ID hey, is the ID that gets passed in, and where the guest is the text, and we're recording guest as either true or false as a text because SQLite doesn't have Boolean values to be the save. So in here, I've got a colon here, which means I need to put after that string literal, I need to whack myself in a dictionary with the lookup for the values that, no, I don't want to do that in the terminal. Um, go away. Thank you. Um, Back to there, thank you. Um, I, sorry, I'm gonna put a dictionary in which is gonna look up this value. So it's gonna say look up user ID. So I need to say user ID. And user ID is going to point um, to where it can find the value for user ID, which is the value that gets passed in, which is also called user ID. So we've got our lookup dictionary done and that is all set. So that's our execution. We've actually executed our, our um, SQL query. So the next thing we do, what we've always been doing, is we then fetch those results and then we return them so we can t run it in test and see what happens. So I always, we put our, our fetch always into results and we fetch, um, fetch again using our cursor, cursor.fetch. Now remember this is a list of words and it could be a short or it could be a huge but we need to get all the results we know all the words they have actually selected um they've guessed so fetch all and put it in results and then at the moment i'm just going to return um results and um in returning results i'm going to in returning the results i'm going to um be able to see what actually happens here so let's go up to test and I'm going to change that. So I'm saying now, actually, have I got, let's see, who's actually guessed games in here? Um, I haven't got any games results in here. Well, that's not going to be very useful, is it? Hmm. Okay, I'm just going to pause this. I'm going to add some games in using DB Browser. So we've actually got some bays in here to play with. Okay, so I'm back. I've now added some games into there. Don't worry, um, I will update the resources. So you're going to be in the exact same situation that I'm here. So um, user ID, um, just going to be playing this, and these are some of the results that he's got. Okay, so um, what was I doing again? I was trying to find out the um, guess words. Let's have a look. So I come into my say that I come into my test store and go I'm um, database I need to get um, guest words and what I'm looking for I'm looking at user ID and number two and I press play and I get it and I've got a syntax error where is the syntax error um, what have I done wrong here let's see Duh. Do, I'm just going to shut both my shells down and try that again. Test, run. Okay, no such table word, and it's cause, okay. So coming into here, and I've said word instead of words, because I didn't check that over there, just check games, games, right, let's save that again. Test, run it, and there we are. So absorbing backplate, hollow bust, and Resinio no electric. Wow, I guess that, cool. Radio, so there we are. We've got the list of tuples again that is being, um, is being returned, but we don't want the list of tuples. So I have to do the same thing as we did last time. Let's go to the data store here. And I'm going to, instead of doing results, in turn the results, we're going to say, okay, this is gonna be words. Um, actually, again, we need to check something. What if the user doesn't have any? Right here. So let's see. If the user hasn't guessed any, so let's go test and let's go number one because Jeff hasn't played yet. So let's see what the results are. R returns an empty string. 
So I can't pass through an empty string here because what we have been doing previously, been going over all the results and then getting the first value from um, the tuple and adding it to another list. We can't do that. So we need to allow for the fact that it may actually be an empty list, an empty list. So let's look at that. So if results equals an empty, oh, sorry, is equal to an empty list, then I just want to return results, okay? That's cool. So if it's an empty list, just need to return results, that's cool. If it's not an empty list, it's a list of tuples and we need to change that so it actually becomes a list of strings. So um, else in here and I say um, words is an empty string and then I say for value in results I need to say words dot append val value and the first position should be words not word and then I say return words so remember what that does it goes along this is our go up here this is our list of that it gets a list of tuples and I say okay get the first value in that list which is this absorbing and then take the zero the initial um, the initial element which is this string absorbing and then add that to the empty list words do the same for the next one same for the next one same for the next one as a result you end up with a list with just the strings in there let's save that go into save that go into testing and go play and we got that again and oh because it's still, it's still got one in there that's correct that's what we want to see i'm going to put two in and what does it give me absorbing but it only gives me one word why is that that should be giving more full value append value for value in results Okay, let's have a look. Return results on that. Results is going to be here. For value in results. Yep. Words dot append that return words. Words is in here. Uh, oh, okay. Sorry. I need to move return because it returned it each time I appended it and created a new one. So I just return it after not after each element but at the very end. So I need to make the full list, then I return the words. Okay, let's see if that works. Testing, press play. Yep, absorbing backplate, hollow blast, resonate. Resonio electric. Okay, so that's awesome. I've got my first one here. So I've got my list of guest words. Now, I need to adjust my get word, okay? Because... Um, Right, so we need to adjust get words in the same way as just being aware that our next step, we're gonna go about putting our information required into the database. Now, if we look at game, the information that needs to come over here, it needs, well, that's an auto-generated key. You don't have to worry about this. User ID, we have that. That's stored in self.userID. Word ID is unknown for us, right? And the guest text, well, you work that in the logic of the game. If they win, you put true. If they lose, you put false. So the problem is this one. We got to get word ID. Now, I could have a separate um, method which says get word ID and just run that. That's fine. But I want to introduce to you a new co a little concept that we haven't dealt with yet. Um, so in this, I knew, need to actually um, go to my get word and change this a little bit. So I'm coming back to to data store I'm going to tour it says get word um, right get word we've got this now it's going to return a string but I'm going to change it because what I'm actually going to do is I'm not going to return a string I'm going to return a tuple radio and that tuple is going to be an integer and a string 
So it returns both of them. It returns an integer and a string. The integer is going to be the word ID and the string is going to be the string. So we're going to change this. Um, so we actually return the word ID as well. So let's see. I'm going to adjust the SQL command down here. That's select word, but I want to put word ID first. Word ID. So rather than just returning the word, we're returning both the word ID and the word. Okay, that's fine. That works. It returns it back. So it's going to execute it. Um, yep, runs through. And let's just test that in um, in our testing here. So I'm going to save that. Go to testing and say um, get word. All right. And close brackets. Run. And... What problem have we got there? Get word. Um, no, wait a second. Come back over here. What's happened here? So I'm getting word. I'm getting the results. Oh, wait a second. I'm just going to um, comment these out. And so we can just see the actual result itself um, and just say return results. Right. Return results. So again, save and run test and bang. So you can see this actually returning all the words at the moment now, and it's also returning their actual ID number. Awesome, that's great, that's what we wanted. So I'm gonna come back over here. So that's what we've done. We can see that it's returning a list of tuples, and that's what we want. We don't have to remove the tuples, that's a good thing. But we need to change it so it returns a random tuple. So let's just come back. So instead of returning results, I want to return a random dot choice results. Okay. So I'm returning a random result here. Save. I'm going to run in test. I'm going to run that and see if it just returns one. Yep. It's returning a random tuple. I just make sure it's different each time. And you can see the words change each time. Now, the last little thing that we don't want to change is that we still need to test radio if the word length is greater than three. So how are we going to do that? So we're going to keep our while loop. I'm going to bring this back in here and we'll make some changes with it. Right. So the return while loop. So I need to get rid of this here and I'm coming down and I'm going to put x um, take you away right word equals random choice results what we had so that's our word that we're choosing but we need to check not the word this is a tuple now we only need to check the second element in the tuple which is one to make sure the word is longer than three so we just changed there just run through those a little bit quick what we just changed there is we went through and we've changed it so get word is now returning the tuple so I'm actually getting the tuple by having word ID and word returned from my SQL query. Um, and then when it comes in, we are going back and we're checking, we're getting a random, out of that list of all the words, we're getting a, choosing a random one. And then we're making sure that the word in that tuple, which is the second element in that tuple, that it is actually, um, it is greater than three, the length of it's greater than three. And if so, then we return the entire thing. So that's the changes we need to make on this side. But we also need to make some changes in Hangman because the problem is um, in the actual main program is that it's expecting only a string and it's getting a tuple back now. So it's going to have a bit of a frustration. So I'm going to show you a, a really cool little um, idea that occurs in Python. I'm just going to um, make a little scratch pad down here and show you this concept. Right. So if I have... If I have these values in here, in Python, you can actually assign multiple variables um, in the one line. So I'm assigning fruit one and fruit two and fruit three from this tuple. I'm actually doing what is called unpacking the tuple. So we're taking apple one and putting it into fruit one, orange into fruit two, not that you, how you spell orange, but anyway, and banana into fruit three. 
So if I was to actually print those three at the moment, you would see that if I press play, um, apple, orange, and banana comes through. Okay, so we're packing from a, I am unpacking from a tuple into multiple variables in the one line. Right, so what does it mean for us? Well, we go across to data, um, to hangman, where we actually have in our choose word. Now, where was choose word? Choose word was up here. Here it is, choose word. At the moment, we say it says self, um, dot word equals get word. Now we know this is returning a tuple now. So I can unpack that tuple by going self dot word ID. The first element of the tuple will go into word ID. The second element of the tuple will go into word. And the thing is word ID doesn't actually exist. So I actually want to come up here into the um, game variables and have um, self dot word ID and have it equal to none. Right, so that should now actually work. Where it's pulling that information back in. Let's just check it. Let's just see that I haven't got an error. So I'm going to go um, and log in. Right, and it's guessed it. Okay, so it's happy. I'm going to get a new word. It's made another word. Okay, you can see the word down here still. Right, and another word. So that's work. It's still working. And as well, we're also getting the game ID. Right? So let's done that fix that up so now we've changed it so we're getting the word id back so now i've got the word id i've got the game id that's auto generated i've got the user id the word id and i know the result via game logic so now i have all those values i can actually add those in to the database so we can now go back to the data store here and we can create our add result so we're going to add to our add methods down here because I actually have access to all those values now. And go def add um, result and it's a self. And what am I passing in? I am passing in, I need the user ID, which is an integer. Uh, I need the word ID, which is also an integer. Oh, that wasn't right. Take that off, put that there, that's better. Um, and I need to get the guest, which is gonna be passed in as a string. And what do I return? I return nothing, so that's fine. So I've defined the actual method there for adding the result. So I come down to here, and I'm going to say, what's this do? This um, adds the game result to the database. Okay, so now I've done that. What do I need to do? Again, an SQL command, it's an insert command. We have two parts to that. The first part of all SQL commands um, is that we need to execute with the cursor. So self dot dot cursor and I'm going to execute and the SQL command I'm gonna execute, I need to put inside the parentheses and put inside the inverted commas and I need to write up what I'm gonna do, which is insert into games and I'm saying user ID game ID guest. Right, let's make sure that unlike last time I got these right. User ID, so games, games. User ID, user ID. Um, oh, not a game ID, this should be word ID. That's lucky I checked. Word ID, word ID, and guest, and guest. Cool. So I've got all those. And what values am I going to ins put into there? I'm going to put in, and again, this is parameterized says check the lookup dictionary after the comma later on. So word ID and um, oh, colon guest. All right, let's put a space in there, make it a bit easier to read. Radio. So that's what I'm doing, and now I have to put the lookup dictionary at afterwards so it knows where to find those values. 
So the first one was user ID, and where does where am I going to point it to? I'm going to point it up to this up here, this parameter or this argument that's sent in, user ID, comma for the next one is word ID, and I need to point word ID to again the argument that's passed in of word ID, and finally guest, and I need to point that to the argument of guest that was all oh, guest I might change that to guest up there okay that's passed in right yeah so they all match up that's there that highlights there that highlights there you highlight into there there yep yep okay so now I can actually do that um, once, because it's an insert command, now I've executed it. The next stage that I need to do is I need to commit that. And remember, we use the connection to commit. We don't use the cursor. So connection dot commit, open close brackets, done. Save. Again, let's test this. Right, so um, now remember Jeff hasn't um, answered anyone's yet. So credential, no, no, add credentials. Sorry, add result. Okay, and I need to put the user ID. So Jeff is user ID number one. I'm going to put word ID. Let's put word four in and let's say false. Right, and so I run that. Okay, and I check my games. Um, and here in my games table, user ID number one, word four, false. Awesome. Okay, so that all works. That all gets sent in and how we want. So let's save that and now we can go across to our controller and we can put the last little bits of information in here. Well, the actual interactions of it and get the whole things working together. So first off, I need to adjust choose word. Radio. Um, so we need to just choose word method to reject the words that the user has already guessed. So let's see, where's choose word was up here. And we've got that coming back that way. That's cool. So I need to change it and say, um, so we're getting to get a list of all the, oh, that's where the print is. Cool. We need to get a list of all the um, guest words. Radio. So let's say, um, do 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 do. Right, so look at this situation here. We'll be saying we're getting the guest word, which is here. Oh, we're getting, sorry, we're getting the, the random word. But the thing is, if it's in the guest word list, I want to actually guess it again. So I'm going to say while, and then while self.word, which is what it returns, if it is in, um, sorry, if it's in our database, um, get guest words, if it's in that for this particular user, right? If it's in there, so if it returns a word that's in his guest word list, then I simply want to do this again, right? So put that in there and I'll do it again. So self word in, so if the word, guess the word, get the word, no, Get a random word, see if that random word has already been guessed. If it has already been guessed, then guess it again and keep doing that until it's not a word, return a word that's not guessed. That's all we need to do. I'm gonna leave my print word there so we can know and cheat later on. Okay, so there's it. We're choosing the word, we're getting that, we made that adjustment there. The next thing we need to do um, is we need to go down and we now need to actually write our results to the database. Now, if you remember from way, way, way back in the last series of videos, most of our game logic resides inside the letter button method. So again, into the signals and there should be, oh sorry, the slots and here's the letter button. So this is where I check if the letter is in the word. Yep, so it gets there, checks, is the letter in the word, okay. So I add a guess to the guess, to the guessed words. Um, if the um, if the guess is in self words, then I add it in there. 
Um, I come down to here, and this is what I want this part. I check for the win. That's why I've got all these comments there, so I can make it easy to follow. So I'm checking for the win. So if, if it has won, it says the winner. But I want to do more than just the winner now. I also want to add in um, the fact that it also um, will write the results to the database. So to do that, I can say self dot database dot add result. What I need to add in, I need to add the user ID. Well, that is self dot user ID, right? What else do I need to add? I need to add the word ID. So that is self dot word ID. And then I need to add the guest result as a string. So this is a win. So it is true. True that he actually guessed it, right? Or that she actually guessed it. So coming down to here, um, I'm checking for a loss now. So if it's a loss, if they've actually won, then I need to come back to here and I need to add in my, um, my result for the loss. And that can happen at the bottom here. So I need to self.database.result, add result, sorry. And what I need to add there, I need to say again what the user ID is. So that's self.userID, um, comma, self dot um, uh, word ID. And then last thing I want me to add in is guest. And this one is going to be false. Okay, so I've added those values in. Let me see, add results, false, etc. That looks about right. So let's save the game. Radio, and I'm now going to play it and hope it doesn't crash. No, it's running. Awesome. So then I'm going to start as. So this is user two. I'm going to log in. I'm going to fail to guess a word. Can you believe there's. Okay, let's go. Let's just keep going. Or I'm going to fail to actually. I might actually get it. There we are. Um, macro Zork. Zoop Spore, I never would have guessed that anyway. So let's just see if I click over here and just move him down here. And if I come back and look at our results on games, I should have a result. Remember we put two in, that was Jeff's result. And here's game number 10 and it's user two. And that's the word and a false was correct. It failed the false. But because I got it in a branch, I need to do the tricky start. I need to now um, put in the correct word. But you know, the great thing is, I still got the correct word down here, so I can actually just guess it. Don't have to guess it. Oh, that didn't work well. Um, oh, I think I realized what I've done wrong there. Okay, I'm going to have to fix that up. Um, o, and it's not going to let me do it because I can't choose X. So, and the problem is, and just while I tested both sides here, the problem is that that's a capital X. And so, it didn't like the capital X. Hmm, why is that? So let's go back and in the data store, when I return, actually, let's hide you and let's go up to get letter or choose word, sorry. Set up, initialize, show, choose word. Um, Self.word. Ah, so let's come and capitalize and not the rest of them. And they all got capital values here. So I need to say um, self.word dot. Uh, I need to set it to an upper. How am I going to set it to upper? Well, how about I just do that in the data store? Let's say this and Let's put it get word self dot word. So in the data store, instead of just returning get word, where are we? Get word. So instead of just returning the word that way. No, I don't want to put the upper there. Let's put it in here. Sorry. Um, so print self dot word. So we want to put that making, no, put it in that data store. Right here, self dot word, get it here. I'm getting the result, fetch all random word equals that word equals random choice. If like the word, return word. But that's a tuple. So, um, 
I will change it over here. So then all I need to do is say self.word equals um, self.word dot upper. So I'm making it all caps lock. Rightio, so let's try that and see what happens here. Bang. Again, let's go. And you're gonna see that they are all capitalized down here. Um, demo and password is happy login. And so I know it is um, H E A L D. And it's not recognized any of those. Oh, this doesn't look good. I'm gonna pause this and work out what I've done wrong. Okay, here we are. I realize what the problem is that when I get the letter, I convert it all to lower. So let's just change that to upper. So this is the part where I'm getting the letter from the actual button and I've changed it to upper. So I can do that or to stay with the original program, I'm just gonna change so the value to upper, when I get word, I'm just going to change it to lower. Okay, so let's save that, run that one last time. And um, log in, okay. Um, N A, yay, it's happy, it's working. N A T. Um, O R I A L. Winner! Last. So let's quit out of here and go to my games result. Bang. And yes, there's the last one, which was a winner, and that's true. So that's done. A bit of problem solving there, a bit of hassle you have when you refactor and change things around. That's no worries, but all been resolved. So there we are. That is how we record our results um, in our Hangman game.